dragon. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Westworld episode 3 video. Just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. The title was Virtue and Fortune. So we're starting to see the beginnings of Teddy versus Dolores. Like Dolores has no virtue. She throws all those confederados under the bus, but Teddy does have virtue. So he lets the major go. We also finally got back with Armistice, who we haven't seen. She has a dragon, probably my favorite line from the episode. So if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'm doing Westworld all season long. So top 10 WTF and I'll try to explain what clues they left for the end of the timeline because we saw a whole bunch of flashes in the first episode. This episode paid off a lot of things, especially that Bengal tiger that we saw from the other park. So number 10, episode starts at this other Dutch East Indies park looking place where you have two people meeting up that are seemingly real, but they test each other with that crazy sexy time game. Let's shoot each other to see if we're real. And I mean, it, it totally worked. It was one of my favorite scenes from the episode. I love the misdirect. I love how crazy that woman seemed, although she seemed like the one that had her head on straight. She also has this sub storyline that's continuing in what I guess is going to be either next week's episode or maybe a couple episodes. We don't always check in with every single character every single episode. But number nine, we find out where this is in the timeline because they go to hunt those Bengal tigers, which gives us an idea for, oh, okay, this is where we are. That's where that tiger came from during episode one. So starting to connect the dots, but you have to remember that not everybody revolted in all the different parks all at the same time. What happens is, is because the hosts are all networked, it spreads. So it started in Westworld with Dolores, then like slowly spread from host to host as they came in proximity to each other. So just assume this is happening within a day or two of Dolores killing Ford, because you have to imagine that if there was something really big going on in Westworld, they would probably try to keep it on the DL. So even if there was stuff going on in other parks, they probably wouldn't alert everyone. But number eight, this becomes this funny recurring thing for this woman's storyline, out of the fire, into the frying pan. So she goes from like one crazy situation, escapes into another. So just as she escapes those hosts in a twist on that sexy time game they played at the beginning of the episode, oh, don't worry, it's just a fake gun. It won't hurt me at all. Nope, not at all. You are definitely dead now. She runs off and then finds that she's at the mercy of the Bengal tiger. It chases her out of the park. And then we find out how the tiger washed up on the shore. So the hilarious twist at the end is that it's just she's climbing out of the river like, oh, finally, I made it. I escaped. She finds herself at the mercy of those ghost nation people that are sharpening their knives. Like you just wonder, this is probably not the last we'll see of her, but it's just hilarious how she goes from one crazy situation to the next. Like, oh, thank God I escaped that tiger. Oh wait, there are these people that look like they might want to skin me or eat me alive. Who knows? The important thing to remember too about her storyline is, is the journal she was looking at looked like it had a map in it. There was a symbol that was drawn that also appeared when Bernard decoded that big master file that was stored on Abernathy. So either she's a Delos person looking for something within the park because she looked like she was there for some other reason besides leisure. Like the guy was there just to have fun. She was probably there on some special secret mission. It might have something to do with Abernathy, but we'll probably find out in a couple episodes. But number seven, at a place called The Cradle, which just looks like an entry point to where they do a lot of service, you find Charlotte for the first time, and it looks like this is closer to the end of that two-week period. Like, you, you see all those people march in. Do you have what I want? No, we're still working on it. Because they're still looking for the Abernathy host. Because Charlotte, the way she talks to Bernard, makes it sound like she knows that he's a host now. Because there's a moment in that season two trailer where she's looking at all the different copies of Bernard. So at some point this season, she finds out. But all the footage we've seen of her is from early in that two week period, right after the revolt. We haven't seen her at the end of that period because the way she talks about Bernard makes it sound like she knows. Like she says, do you have any idea where Abernathy is? And it's almost like this little sinister thing, like something's passing between the two of them that the other guards don't know about. Notice that this version of Charlotte isn't wearing the vest that she was wearing later in the episode. So this early version of Charlotte is from later in the timeline. The other version of Charlotte, where she tries to first find the Abernathy host, is from earlier in the timeline. But I don't think that they go further before the end of last week's episode. Like, that's the earliest point in time when they're first here up against Stephen Ogg's host that they hack into, which was hilarious. That was actually my number six, hacking Stephen Ogg, making him the most virtuous fastest gun in the West. So it's like a complete reversal on his character. He turns him from a Negan type character, just totally despicable, all the way to Teddy, who's supposed to be the most virtuous person as far as we know so far. 
But number five, we finally catch up with the Abernathy host. And he's obviously got all those layers of programming on him. It's just like this flimsy collection of programming to keep him intact so that he can get on the train and get out of the park. Like, that's the whole idea. I need to catch my train. It's like this Alice in Wonderland thing where he needs to get himself there so that Delos can collect him. Bernard notes that he's cycling through previous roles, so he gets to have a different personality every 20 seconds. We even got to see the cannibal version of him come back from the end of the pilot episode where he was quoting poetry talking about eating people. Probably one of the greatest ways to end a pilot episode ever. But the really important thing about him showing up, in addition to the overplot, like he's got this special information that Delos wants on how to continue operating without Ford being around, but it's also the first time that Dolores, as Wyatt, shows any genuine sympathy towards any other host character besides Teddy. So remember the title of the episode, Virtue and Fortune. It's, it's all about the idea of Dolores not having any virtue, or Wyatt, however you want to think about her. This version of her doesn't care about anyone, like she throws all the confederados under the bus. So her father is like the one thing besides Teddy that she really gets pissed about, especially when Charlotte runs off with him. But number four, we catch back up with Maeve, Sizemore, and Hector, who catch up with Armistice while running into some of the Ghost Nation soldiers. So if it wasn't clear, the Ghost Nation as a group of characters are much bigger this season. That's why you saw them a couple times during the episode. They probably become a much bigger part of the season next week. But Maeve has been flashing back to her daughter being killed over and over ever since season one. One time we saw it as the man in black coming to do that. But I think those Ghost Nation people raiding her home is just part of what that loop was. So that would happen over and over to her again. And it was just that one time that the man in black came to do it to test himself, as he said. So they're basically on their way to the homesteads because Sizemore said that her daughter was at this same place where her old loop used to be. Like, she's been here this whole time. Okay, we'll just go back there and pick her up. But number three, on the way, we run back into Armistice for the first time since the end of last season. She even has this crazy Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker thing going on where she pulls the glove off. She's more Darth Vader than she is Anakin Skywalker or Luke. But I love the way, like, you see Luke in Return of the Jedi pull that black glove off and you see the mechanical hand a little bit. It's like a really twisted version of that. And then you have like a real sly Game of Thrones reference where Hector says, we have a dragon and it's her with the giant flamethrower. I suppose calling Armistice a dragon would be an apt description of her character. She was one of the most fun things about the back half of last season when things really went off the rails and she started to go nuts. But number two, the big battle at Fort Forlorn Hope. So we have Bernard, we have Abernathy, we have Dolores, and Dolores throwing everyone under the bus because she needs to survive the Delos attack. That's the only reason she formed that alliance. So imagine a version of Blackwater during Game of Thrones Season 2 if Tyrion then turned around and killed all the soldiers that were defending King's Landing. You get the big twist with Teddy, it seems like it's a bit of a setup for him to go against Dolores, like Teddy versus Dolores sometime later in the season. Because remember, at the end of this two-week timeline, we see Bernard standing at that lake of dead hosts in the water, and one of them is Teddy floating beneath the surface. So early prediction, Dolores says that not everyone is meant to make it to the next step, the place that Dolores is trying to get to. She might wind up killing Teddy herself if she deems him not worthy. That might be how he winds up in this lake. But if it wasn't clear, the whole episode is meant to paint her like a villain, even though she has a couple sympathetic moments with her father. Number one was the Shogun World teaser at the end of the episode. They even had the flute music playing over the credits like, oh, this is where we're going next. This makes it sound like it's coming from Shogun World. And these samurais just wound up mysteriously in the Klondike territory of Westworld. So if it wasn't clear, this snowy area is still in Westworld. They're in the mountainous area heading towards the homestead to find Maeve's daughter, but they find hosts from Shogun World. So this part of the park just probably borders the Shogun World park which presumably we will go to next week. The big person that they cast for that storyline to is Rinko Kikuchi. So if you're a big fan of that actress, we'll probably meet her next week. But I didn't see her in the trailer, so we'll see. There's going to be a little bit of Shogun World, but like there was that British East Indies park. We'll see at least as much Shogun World as we saw of that at the beginning of the episode. So for the most part, the show still takes place in Westworld. The other parks just spill into episodes at certain points. But man, there's so much that we could say about this episode. So many good character moments. 
One of the funnier parts, too, was when Sizemore got really upset when Maeve and Hector started kissing each other. He's like, no, 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 you're not supposed to be together. I didn't write you that way. It's not part of your programming. You're supposed to be with Isabella. And Maeve correctly deduces that Sizemore wrote that Hector-Isabella relationship based on one of his failed relationships. So it's kind of like him writing fan fiction for himself. And he writes himself looking and acting like Rodrigo Santoro. So it's just really hilarious. But let me know in the comments what was your favorite part of the episode. I mean, we can talk all about what's on that secret file that Bernard started to decode. He looked like he was trying to download some of the files, so he may have copied some of it to himself. But it'll have something to do with the place that they're going towards and the weapon that Dolores is probably talking about in last week's episode. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening next week, so I'll try to get to it as fast as possible. Leave all your requests in the comments below. But click here for my Westworld video playlist and click here for brand new Infinity War. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.